So Ben did these little detail shots of the tripod when we were set up in an alleyway. All I've done really just here is go in and track onto this. Increase the brightness, um, pull the blacks down a little bit, do a little bit of work just here, pulling the saturation down, and then just a bit of sharpening so that you are looking at that. And if we full screen, take a look at this. You see, if I take that off, yeah, it's still sort of where you're looking, but your eye doesn't instantly go there. And it's important to view this in the context of all of the things that are happening around it so that you can get some impression of the speed of the edit. So when you're looking at these, you have a split second to see what you need to see. And I've just helped the eye along there by making that a little bit more obvious, boosting it up a bit. All of these are pretty quick shots, not too much going on with any of those. Early, early morning, this was absolutely freezing. Uh, this is more black magic stuff and it's just so glorious. Look at that. Great shots there. This shot was really interesting because it was something that came from the original mood board. There was a shot from a fashion shoot where we had lots of people moving. We had clothes being passed off. We had production crew there. The gimbal is obviously giving us a little bit of movement as well. So we choreographed everyone to have a certain point here and it works very nicely as a dance, getting everyone to position and gives that kind of vibrant feel like the shoot's really kicking off and everyone has their place. Joe's got an iPad, Rathika's there looking at the focus. Um, we've got makeup artists moving in the background to touch up the model. Louis in the background just changing that light. So it all has a little bit of purpose and direction to it. More traveling shots of Dale. We've got so many walking shots of me. Okay, lots going on in this GH5 shot to get it to work. I'm pulling down the sky. I am correcting some of the overall levels, softening things off a little bit, and just generally correcting all of this to make it a little bit richer. It works in the end, but again, it's not my favorite shot, but it does help to tell the story. Bang, okay. This one's fun because it's, again, drawing your eye to that, and that is tracked on. So if we just go to the power windows, We can see this and my hand just covers it in the last minute. And then we cut to this different angle coming up, bang, very much the center of the frame, very much where your eye is gonna be looking. Uh, I haven't gone the extra step here because I felt that it wasn't necessary um, and it would have made it too zingy in that particular instance. Now it isn't all about the uh, final shots that I was getting, but I do love this. We were playing with the Schneider uh, True Streak filters. We had all of our beautiful Broncolor HMI lights and LED lights, and this shot is just money. I mean, we've got the Para 222, it's all streaky and lovely, model looks awesome. She's mostly in silhouette, but she's still getting all of this lovely catch around her because that light is so big that it kind of wraps around even though she's in front of it. That's how big it is and how it kicks in around the jawline there and just gives her a little bit of definition. You can even catch a little bit of the makeup around her eyes just there, which is all silver. So that's super, super cool. And I just love this shot. Now for me, it's important to have this kind of shot in there because I'm trying to appeal to people like me, people who are out there filming things. And when I look at this, I just want to go and do that shoot. So that was just one example of me trying to bring in something which I felt was a very strong aesthetic for people who are in the industry, people who want to go out and do fashion shoots, that instantly screams fashion shoot to me, and I just wanna be on that shoot doing it. Okay, there's quite a lot going on just here to correct out the sky, and this is interesting because we actually shot this on the Ursa Mini Pro, and you can just see there's so much more detail and richness to it, and we're able to pull it back. So where before on the GH5, I was doing all of those different corrections to get it working, I've just got three here, and that's enough to make it a passable shot. And this is a lot of fun. I have two versions of this shot. You can see they're identical in terms of the corrections that are being used. One of them is a time-lapse for the clouds. We just left this uh, Ursa Pro running. So that is time-lapse of the clouds, basically just going really fast. I've just sped it up. And then we have the waves in slow motion. I think I was going to 150 frames slow motion for the waves just there. So we get this kind of cool, a little bit cheesy, time-lapse of clouds, slow motion waves effect. Most people probably don't even notice that's what's going on. Let's full screen that without anything on. I 
Really simple to achieve this. You just lock your shot off, you shoot at slow motion. If you want to, then you can change to uh, regular speed and film the time-lapse bit, or you can just leave it running slow motion if you want to burn some card space and have a really high shutter speed. But yeah, essentially then you just bring it in, take a cut somewhere, so pretty much along the shoreline just here and along the cliffs just there. And that is all you do. Um, it works perfectly well and it helps to create a little bit more interest in what could otherwise be just a fairly generic shot of just some waves crashing without the sky moving that much. This just gives you that extra bit of interest. Now I have gone around and lightened up the foreground a little bit so that we can see that and not crush everything off and obviously corrections that I've done to the sky just to bring in a tiny bit more detail there, a little bit of sharpening and obviously film convert just sitting at the end of the chain. Now throughout the whole project in every location, we had a shot that we needed to get, which was the tripod set up at a certain height in the center of frame with me walking up to it and adjusting it and basically starting to film. Now it was important that this shot matched every time because we were doing this compilation of match cuts at the end to be able to show all of these different locations with a tripod in the same place in every single one. So if we're skipping through, Now that means that the tripod has to be set up at the same height, but there are also other complications like the fact that we're using two different tripod systems. We've got the single leg, we've got the twin leg. They are slightly different, so we need to try and match those. We need to have the legs in the same place. We've got one leg forwards and two legs back like that that had to be perpendicular to the camera. And then the camera, whatever was set up, had to be at the correct height. Now we need this to be perfect, so we always shot it on Nursa. We have two Ursas, so we're able to do that even when there's a Nursa in shot. And it was important to get the height of the camera that's filming correct as well, because everything needs to sit. So we need the elevation to be the same. Now that is particularly tricky because we are in uh, the middle of Iceland in a national park with deep snow, trying to get the same height that we're then going to use in the studio, we're gonna use in Barcelona, we're going to use when we go out and do the horse shoot, we're gonna use it when we do the uh, corporate shoot. So it had to match no matter what, and that was actually quite tricky. We knew that something might not be perfect, so we shot it quite wide and made sure that we had the wiggle room to correct everything and pull in a bit if we needed to. Also, the whole shot had to play out with some kind of movement as well. We did that in post, so I just comped everything together, made a compound clip, and then did the zoom that you see in post, it gives it a little bit more impact and focuses your eye on that tripod. And once we got the grade on that, everything looks awesome and we get our wicked, powerful ending. I hope this short series has been interesting. I know that a lot of people are curious about the kind of projects we do and more of the behind the scenes stuff of like the planning and the pre-production. So I've tried to go into that a little bit more in this. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I'm more than happy to chat through this and answer any of those specifics in the comment section. And obviously like and comment because it helps us to push this channel and keep it going. And we are doing more of these projects. So if you'd like to see more breakdowns similar to this, where we look at the pre-production, we look at how we planned it out, we look at how we did all the logistics of traveling around, and we looked at any of the uh, shortcomings of the project. So there are things here which we would have done differently had we have had more time, if we'd had the sun with us in Barcelona, if we'd been able to travel to our original planned location in Italy, that would have been different as well. So there's always things that you've got to flex with when you're working on a project of this nature. But ultimately at the end of the day, no matter what happens, you just have to be able to come away with the shots that are going to work. So even if the weather's bad in Iceland and it's coming down a storm like it was on the first day, we have to go out and we have to try and shoot something. As long as it's safe, as long as we're able to do it, we have to try and make it work. And we did. Even though the sunlight isn't with us in Barcelona, we have to get those shots. We can't say, well, we'll try again tomorrow because we're flying back. Got to get the shots, did that. In the studio, obviously it's a little bit easier because we can set things up. And likewise, when we're doing the office shoot, the horse shoot, we lucked out, we did have the sunrise with us. So that was kind of almost exactly as I imagined it in my head. It's always interesting, look back on projects and think what your first idea of the project was what the final concept you went with was and how that fitted together with storyboards and mood boards or mood films like I cut together and then how that compares to what the ultimate final edit was. And you look at the two of them and in this case we have the same music, it has a similar vibe and I have to say I'm very pleased with the way that it's worked and I've played it to a few people and they've 
said they've got that feeling of wanting to be out on the shoot and that was really the core of everything for me here making sure that they felt like it was something that they wanted to do and the kind of locations the kind of way that we were shooting was something that was relatable for them and something which was inspirational perhaps things that they would love to be able to do work with a model in a studio work with a model in barcelona go out into iceland and capture some dramatic scenery these are all things that i would want to do these are all things that i love doing so being able to do them on a project like this and cut it together into a piece which has that kind of vibe and intensity to it was just awesome i hope you've enjoyed this short series as much as the team and i did uh, capturing it it had its pressures you know joe was working really hard to make sure that we were getting the places that we wanted to get and we were safe and we had flights and hotels and models and hair and makeup and all of the rest of it booked in our itinerary planned out so again Think about your production. Think about how you're going to get everything to work. Think about your logistics. Think about your crew. Think about your equipment. Think about how that's going to fit together when you get to the place that you're going. How quickly can you deploy everything? How quickly can you pack it back up and get back onto your flight? Does it go down into cases neatly? Are you taking the right kind of batteries? On flights, you can't go above that 100 amp hour threshold, so you've got to be aware of this. You've got to make sure you're carrying those batteries on. You've got to make sure you've got backups of your footage. So there's a lot that goes into being able to produce all of this, not to mention the entire post workflow behind it as well. It's a lot of fun to work on, but it's a lot of pressure, and we pulled it off um, shoot-wise in a week. And the team were exhausted but exhilarated. Everyone loves this kind of thing at Still Moving and it's what makes us get up early in the mornings and go out and shoot. When we get to work on fun projects like this, you can't really complain.